Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week of Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist DT from weatherist.com here in Central Virginia, the captain of chaos, chrono confusion, commander catastrophe. Let's talk about weather, and a lot to talk about here, so let's get right to it. There, first, I'll show, let you know there's a picture of my smiling face from Richmond, Virginia, and uh, you can see that... Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, typo. Uh, there's the uh, weather email, two emails here, and the uh, Facebook pages, and uh, the Twitter account. Okay. And if there's a new Twitter account there, we're talking about snowstorms. The snowstorm page here will be updated later on this evening. It's probably around uh, midnight, I think, before I go to sleep. So we'll get to that. Our topics here are going to be, of course, we'll talk about Saturday, January 25th, to see if there's anything developing there. There are hints of something, but we'll see. And then the pattern is collapsing. The pattern change that we talked about last time on January 13th is collapsing pretty fat rapidly now. Uh, it's not working out like we thought. And uh, the winter of the eastern U.S. is in deep trouble. Uh, the end of the month potential is gone. It's just it's just not there. So let's get right to it here. All right, uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, temperature anomaly since the first of the month. On the upper left and the bottom right there is last week. You can see how warm it has been for most of the country, especially east of the Mississippi River, and the, even over the last week, um, we, remember we've had a couple of these big low pressure areas, which have tracked you know up this way and this direction. And what that does is that pulls up the warm air here, pulls down the cold air in that direction. So uh, even those two big storms we had recently, uh, which became the blizzards up in Nova Scotia, by the way, haven't done much and kept temperatures pretty warm. Now, last time I posted, I talked about this, you know, for January 25th. I posted this back on January 13th. So this is, you know, the European. And you can see that I had uh, focusing here on some high latitude blocking, a nice ridge on the west coast of Canada, and a fairly strong trough negative anomaly over the Mississippi Valley. And it looked like, you know, maybe something might be happening with some high latitude blocking here over eastern Canada. Now, Initially, of course, would have, if you go back several days ago, most of the weather models were showing. I was getting a lot of questions. Dave, what, ap what about January 21st? What about January 25? We still on track. All the models had the load doing this, going up into the Midwest again. And then suddenly yesterday, the European model changed it. Uh, this is the Sunday European, what I'm about to show you. This is the uh, snow map here. You can see it went boom. This is Sunday's run. And you can see huge amounts of snow here from four to as much as 18 inches over at western Maryland, you can see that in here. Uh, the north, you know, Shenandoah Valley, uh, five, six inches, four inches in D.C., much heavier to the north and west and central Maryland, and all the way down to Roanoke and eastern portions of West Virginia, western Maryland, and the southern portions here. Uh, I guess that's Cumberland here in, uh, uh, in South Tuna area, like Johnston in Pennsylvania, that sort of thing. I noticed very sharp cut off all rain in this area for the most part. So, uh, and that was obviously what I was looking at several days back on January 13th. I thought that this would indicate become something like that. And then we can see what the models were doing yesterday. Again, this is the Sunday European, and they show you how it came about that big snow. It has one low here, and there's the coastal low here. So this one dies, and the main energy becomes here. And you can see the lows now uh, over Richmond, just to the east, maybe close to Norfolk, Hampton Roads. You can see the strain snow line down in this part and the heavy snow and this is obviously this would be elevation snow as well so I mean that's obvious here from the snowfall map you can see this is mostly elevation um, that's why you were getting the significant snow there okay so that's what the service maps are doing yesterday and the upper air map and this is the important feature here so pay attention this is really really important uh, the main feature for the system is, is of course the upper low which is here now again this is the a European from Sunday and you can see valid here for Saturday January 25th at 7 a.m. that's the upper low that's the feature we're focused on okay right there now what happened the European takes it over Norfolk excuse me takes it into North Carolina see this Tennessee North Carolina Tennessee North Carolina and one more time for the stupid people out there Tennessee and North Carolina that's where the 500 low has got to go if it tracks through Virginia or Kentucky West Virginia you got nothing and this is really, really important because the upper air features here suck. Okay, the, the Arctic Oscillation is still strongly positive. The North American Oscillation is strongly positive. We have very little ridging on the West Coast. We don't have a, we have a positive Eastern Pacific Oscillation. The upper air pattern in every possible area, all four areas, suck. That's how bad they are. So we've got to get this 500 low 
to stay to our south if you want to see any sort of snow in the middle Atlantic region. And you can see what it does here. You can see, notice what it does. Again, Tennessee, North Carolina, it moves off the coast. Oops. There you go. There you go. Like that. That's what it does. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Now, this is how does this all happen? Well, this is today's European model. Remember, I talked about the system of January 21st. Look at this enormous piece of energy right here. See that kink in the 500 heights? There it is. That's the system for January 21st. I thought this might be, bring some snow to east of North Carolina uh, and become a coastal low off of here. Now, look what happens over the next couple of days. It misses, but just barely. There it goes down now. This is uh, again, this is the uh, Monday European this afternoon you can see the five it develops a close 500 low right there see that okay and uh, here's a ridge behind it right like this so what's happening is this ridge as this ridge is building into the Great Lakes it's forcing this to drop southward like that and it becomes a pretty big system here off the coast and what that does is that ends up moving off the coast here now here comes the next system so let's go back all right this is the system for Sunday or Saturday I should say breaking through here and then this is the current one. So this one's going to go here, and this is going to for be forced to come underneath this ridge and this 500 low. So these two features force the energy to come underneath it and potentially become the East Coast winter threat. And we saw, see that here. Okay, so this is now uh, Friday afternoon. So the system for tomorrow is now off the coast. There it is. And we have this big ridge here. All right, and it's forcing the system to come south. But the question is, how far south? Okay, it's got to go through Tennessee and North Carolina. It goes through Kentucky and Virginia. You got nothing. You got a lot of rain is what happens. So uh, we have don't have any margin to spare with. The problem is, um, again, this was the Sunday run. You can see how far south it is. Um, and But the afternoon runs, I mean, the 12Z run today, and most of the models don't do that. Notice where it is. Okay, look, that's south of the Virginia-North Carolina border. That's where the 500 low. See the green dot? Right on the North Carolina-Virginia border. You can see that. Now look at the new, this is the new run. This is Monday afternoon, 12 is the European. 500 is over Kentucky, much further north. That's a totally different kettle of fish. Totally different kettle of fish. And as a result, we got a lot more rain. Even in the, only in the far, along the Appalachian Mountains there, Virginia, West Virginia, do you have any sort of snowfall. This is all rain. We have a strong, this is much, we have a stronger primary low here or initial low and there's the secondary low but this is so far north it pulls all the warm air with it and everything falls as rain and heavy rain friday night and saturday all right this is the gfs uh we the top one is the 12z run the bottom one is the 18z run again look where the 500 low is kentucky ohio west virginia that's not what we need that's a lot of rain and sorry just not getting the job done and this is what the gfs looks like primary low far to the north, secondary low on the Carolina coast, South Carolina. But again, look, you got south winds. There's our high. The high is here in this area, so we can put our high pressure area right here. Okay. But you're getting now east wind. The primary low is coming up this way, so the interaction between these two things produces a southeast wind. See the isobars? All this way, south winds, south winds, south winds. That's terrible. You don't want that at all. So uh, there you go. That's, that's the problem. All uh, right, this is now the European here uh, after the storm. So what happens after this weekend? Well, there's the storm here off the coast. Uh, whatever happens on Saturday, there it is again off the coast. Looks like it's going to knock the hell out of the Canadian Maritimes again. Be another blizzard for those guys ne uh, on 27th or 28th next week. So they're going to get hit again. Uh, and there's the next system coming in. But again, this is a West Coast system. Where's the big ridge on the West Coast? That's gone. We have more energy coming in this way. No, we got nothing on the West Coast at all. So there's no flow. So that we have Pacific energy coming in this way, going underneath. Okay, this is just Pacific energy. There's no injection of cold air coming down here at all. It just doesn't exist. You can see that. So this is really bad. Uh, if you look at um, the day 10 uh, European ensemble, and this is the mean pattern, the GFS showing the same thing. Again, where's the original West Coast of Canada? Gone completely. Blown to hell in a handbasket. Look at that. Dig deep upper trough here. So Alaska is going to turn very, very cold again after months and months and months of near record warmth. Alaska has been in a deep freeze now for a while. They're going to go back into it. Um, again, it's not severely cold for Alaska, but given how warm it has been for the past 10 months, the last 30, 45 days has been pretty cold and back to normal for Alaska. But you can see, look at the flow here. It's completely out of the Pacific. Big ridge here, 
Look at this upper low. Hey, look how tight the isobars here. See how tight they are? This is tremendous winds. 200, 150 knots, 200 knots, slamming into the west coast of North America, and then it splits. But, you know, this is a right across all the cold airs up in here. There's your polar vortex at the top of Greenland, for Pete's sake. Good googly moogly. And you have the specific air overrunning the country. Now, this is another storm for the Midwest. Big low pressure is going to track up in this direction here at the end of the month. You'll go into the Great Lakes, keeping everything super saturated for the Midwest and the Plain States. But, I mean, that's nothing for the East Coast, folks. That That's that's an ugly looking map. And you can see what happens if you look at the hemispheric shot at the winds here. These are 50 millibar winds at the top of the atmosphere, almost the edge of outer space, the polar vortex. Now here, this is uh, uh, January 22nd. This is Wednesday. So we can see we have a trough here, right here. You can see this very nicely. Okay, there's our strong winds coming down this way. That's fine. And then look what happens uh, by January 30th. Look at the change in the vortex. Donut. <laughs> that to that what this means is that these are winds okay when you have you have these really strong winds around the polar vortex like this okay doing this there's the polar vortex and these winds are very strong so what that means is it's almost it's very very difficult to get these winds to relax these winds have to break down so you can get some sort of trough or blocking or what have you and we're not seeing any of that not with that sort of wind field it's just you know it's just not happening so uh, that's one of the problems and we look beyond the pattern here go be looking into february a little bit uh, the European ensemble shows something, you know, way out there. Uh, again, we still have, so, it, it indicates some sort of blocking trying to develop over Greenland. This would be nice to see. This would be a negative NAO if it happened, or at least neutral. Uh, but we still have the ridges way out here. We still have a trough here in the western Canada. And something along here on the east coast, you know, grasping at straws. Uh, you know, it might be a little colder, but that's about it. And, and even down the road, this is the European weeklies. You know, February 7th, nice big trough, but, you know, it's over the Midwest, not the East Coast. It's not just not that impressive. Now, what's changed? Why has the pattern collapsed? Okay, let's take a look at that. This is from last week. Okay, remember, look at the day here, January 12th, right? Now, there is the MJO right here in Phase 5. And the models all projected it to go through Phase 6, Phase 7, Phase 8, and 1, which is when things get really stormy and cold in the eastern United States. That's what we talked about. And this is what the model, you can see them all doing it. This is the Australia model here on the left, um, taking it into phase eight. There you see it in phase one, right here. Follow the green line. Here's the European, getting it very close to phase eight. And of course, you know, as you go further out in time, it always goes back to the neutral circle. So it was still trending in this direction. And the, the other models are showing that as well. This is the experimental uh, MJO model from Kyle McRitchie. You can see that it clearly taking the phase eight and phase one. And as a result, we were seeing the GFS ensembles show a lot of cold air here the last 10 days of, uh, you know, last week, 10 days of January. And even beyond, look at that. I mean, it was just cold. And, of course, it's all bullshit. It's not going to happen. And one of the reasons you can see that not happening is because uh, this here is the new uh, Australians. You can see uh, January 16th. And look what it does. It gets into phase 8, then it goes in neutral circle. Never goes into phase 8. This is the European monthly model. Seven, boom, phase goes in neutral circle. Never gets into phase eight, never gets into phase one. Very uh, not good news. Not good news at all here. <clears throat> this is also here the Canadian. Look at the Canadian does. It actually goes in phase six and turns, goes, loops around phase four and five, and so does the European. Now, this actually might, if this is correct, it might actually not be horrible because this implies that it's going to swing around and make another run at phase 7, 8, and 1 after February 10th, maybe, middle of February. Again, grasping at straws, that's just a maybe, you know. Now, what's the other problem with the pattern, I've talked about this before, is this. Uh, let me call up this slide here. I talked about this in my final winter. I talked about the Victorian mode or the, the uh, uh, PDO. Um, you know, a lot of people thought initially that this was a positive, uh, a Pacific decade oscillation, a positive phase. That is to say, the warm water was right up against the coast of the United States, and that was going to favor a ridge on the West Coast and a trough in the eastern United States. But that's not what this is showing. This is, as you can see, the warm water pool is not up against British Columbia or Oregon or California. It's in the North Pacific Ocean. And this is a special type of mode or weather feature of the M of the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, which is called the Victoria Mode. 
And uh, what that does is that favors the trough being persistently on the west coast of California and the Rockies and a ridge over the eastern United States. That's exactly what we've seen. So this is one of the things I talked about, what could go wrong here, and I was worried about this. I was hoping this pool of warm water would move to the west coast of Canada, but it did not. Uh, there's another schematic of it here. You can see the difference. Okay, this is the typical PDO, all right? where you've got warm water on the west coast of Canada, you see that. And what that does is typically when that happens, you get a ridge on the west coast and a trough over the eastern United States pulls down the cold air and sets up a stormy pattern. That's what the warm water does. It alters the jet stream. But instead, what we have is this. OK, and that's producing, you know, your trough on the west coast and you're getting your Rockies here. In, in, in the Rockies and then a ridge over the southeast United States. So these two things are not the same thing. And uh, that's part of the problem we've had with the pattern. And I think it's keeping the pattern really screwed up here. And that's why, you know, definitely, I'm not going to say the winter is completely done. There might still be something late, you know, mid-February, late February into March. Um, but it, it's, it's we've got problems. Uh, it's not working out. And I think it, this is the main reason why. And uh, uh, this large pool of really warm water in the Gulf of Alaska, North Pacific, is screwing up the entire pattern. We have a weak sun. We have negative, uh, very weak a QBO. All factors which should be favoring blocking, and but we're not getting it at all. So uh, this, and I think it's because of this blob of warm water in the North Pacific and the Gulf of Alaska is screwing up the pattern. Anyway, that's the uh, this week in weather. So wish I had better news for you guys, but we'll see what happens. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll talk to you soon.